They roll, they fly, they even dive. You can throw this one. You know, eight feet in the air, let it land on either side. That one runs on the sun. Big or small, unmanned aerial vehicles come in all shapes and sizes these days. And chances are they're coming to a city near you. And now we're ready to step into the sort of next generation, if you will, and that's seamless integration into national airspace. This is the world's largest drone expo, happening in the district where industry titans and government regulators meet. 7,000 people and 600 corporations from over 60 countries show off their inventions here. This is the future of technology. So, what we have here, this is the unmanned little bird. What we see here is the Discover 2. At about 130 pounds, you have the Talon robot. The UAV industry in the U.S. is expected to rake in $82.1 billion in the next decade and gross some $482 million in tax revenue. Industry giants boast this unmanned tech will create over 100,000 jobs, reduce operation costs, even save lives. The possibilities are really endless. Search and rescue missions, natural disasters, ozone monitoring. This it can be used by your police, your fire brigades, because it's that small. You can keep it in an ambulance. It can be used for uh, border security, embassy protection. Where there's a chance to cash in, businesses are sure to follow, and so are governments. Ohio is one state that's got its eyes on the sky. So let's talk about uh, how this could potentially help Ohio economically. Sure, huge. First of all, research and technology. Unmanned aerial systems, tremendous research opportunity. That's universities, that's private companies, that's economic development. Certainly jobs, creating, manufacturing UAVs. These are the top 10 states looking at UAV technology as money making opportunities. Utah, Oklahoma, North Dakota, Idaho, Arizona, and Ohio all had booths at the 2013 AUVSI conference attempting to appeal to these UAV companies. A number of others are pushing back against the technology. Virginia instituted a two year moratorium on drones. Even the Federal Aviation Administration has shown hesitation in allowing these devices to fly freely. But that's not stopping these UAV advocates. We're excited. We're waiting for uh, you know uh, our our legislators and and uh, government organizations to figure out exactly what the rules of the road need to be. For those who are worried, privacy tops the growing list of concerns. Happily, you know, um, we don't sell privacy in, in that regard. So I, I would say this. I mean, privacy is a governmental issue, you know, and, and we respect, you know, the, the government's decisions on, on on how that ultimately pans out. Regulatory uncertainty and tough competition is forcing companies to solicit to other markets. Well, the U.S. Uh, is, is a big market, obviously. It's very it's difficult to get into the U.S. if you don't have a U.S. presence or a U.S. partner and so on. But uh, this particular product here with this capability is, is still very, very new in the market. And our focus is right now mostly on uh, an Asia as well as the Middle East. Meaning if the U.S. does decide to turn away from this technology, it could soon fall behind the rest of the world. So what is the takeaway lesson here? Well, the takeaway from this conference anyway is that the UAV industry is not only booming, it's growing exponentially. There are a lot of competitors here and a lot of room for money making opportunities that all the people that you see here today are obviously taking part in. The second takeaway lesson possibly is that UAVs are really inevitable when it comes to a domestic domain. So whether you like it or not, it looks like UAVs could be coming to a city, a state or a private company near you. In Washington, Megan Lopez, RT.